Victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to you. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, listen. I am speechless tonight because when I recount the faithfulness of God, I do not know. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Sing oh, oh. Victory belongs to me. We don't need to be sound for Satan. Now, I will say one and you will shout, Satan, you are what? Right. So, we are going to start now. I hope nobody is sitting. My friend is, tap my boy, tap him. Wait, ushers, I think I need to sanction one of you. How will you bring the man of God and you left his wife at the back? This is her seat. You think it's easy to get married? Ah, uh -uh. please bring mama to sit beside her handsome husband. Glory. Please celebrate her as she comes. Hallelujah. Don't stop clapping until she gets here. Don't stop clapping. Don't stop. Ah. Uh -uh. Let me tell you something. Our faith is in levels. You see the faith this man of God used to marry? Eh? Not all of us have it. <laughs> if we have it by now, somebody like Damasus should be married. We celebrate you, ma'am. Please sit. Only her, only her. Please sit, ma'am. God bless you. Oh, God. Don't worry, we'll have a nice time tonight. Amen. Now let's begin. One. Why are we talking as if we are ten here? Two. Now let the foundations of our embark hear the third one. Three. Oh God. Now help me clash the symbols and play the sound. We are about to exhort Jesus. Ah. Now listen. While we're proceeding in the meeting, my eyes were open to see a number of things. And in confirmation to that, somebody as far back as Delta sent me a message describing the same thing I saw. After this meeting, me, I don't know about you, but my life can never be the same. Ah. See, our generation is implicated forever. Is it that Jesus or nothing else? Ah. One of the things Jesus will do tonight is that he will open us up to the revelation of his son. And the hand of God will become mighty upon our generation. Oh God. Before we proceed, if you are here and you are not filled with the Holy Ghost and you desire it, wave your hand. Use your right hand if you are here. You are not filled with the Holy Ghost. You don't pray in tongues and you desire it, please raise your hand. If you are here, before we continue, because you'll be needing a lot of Holy Ghost this night. So, ah, this is good. Everybody is filled with the Holy Ghost. Shout glory. Good. I'm happy. I'm happy. We will have a meeting some of these days, and that meeting will be for bartenders. But we don't have the luxury of time tonight. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain. Somebody that knows this song should help me.
Jesus is Lord. Do what? Oh God. And we are doing that seven times. Oh. And let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Daily as I live, as often as I breathe. expressions of your grace. When I mention number one, you're going to shout Jesus is Lord. Please don't joke with this exercise. Oh God. In the midst of this exercise, God is going to superimpose his abilities on someone here. Don't joke with this moment before we go into the message. Don't joke with this moment. I, I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. You are my Yahweh, my Yahweh, my Yahweh. Oh. Over our future, over Nigeria, over Africa, over our lives. Pray in the spirit for five minutes. Pray in the spirit for five minutes. For five minutes. Five minutes we superimpose the lordship of Jesus. Close your eyes. We are still praying. 
why I lay down briefly to appreciate God and to enthrone the Lordship of Jesus. My eyes were open in the spirit and I saw God filling people here with fresh water. And it says, this wine is not a wine that is temporal. Oh God. I see the angels of God serve people wine. Now, lift up your hands and close your eyes everywhere you are. God is about to put his hand on someone. I don't know who you are. But, oh God. Now, hold on for me. Hold on. Hold on for me. Please lift up your hands and close your eyes. I see the hand of God in this meeting. And he's about to give a number of people drink. There is a drink that is drink indeed. There is a drink that is drunk indeed. There is a particular young man that God is about to give a new garment of glory. Heavy. Kabod. Kabod. Now I see the hand of God on that person. Father, wherever this person is that you desire to refill, reach out to them now. 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 Now, 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 now. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Now, Father. Uria silo bena kapreni variatina saprada vana kabai kaprana sobre nos. Yes, 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 yes. Drink, 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 drink. Don't be distracted. Another measure. It's another measure. It's another measure. I see God restoring an ordination. Oh my God. Oh my God. Don't be distracted. Drink. Oh Jesus. Out of my belly shall flow rivers oh my god rivers of living waters see just in case you've been playing before now i beg you to take this moment serious god do not call a meeting because he wants people to gather there is a reason for every time god calls a meeting and this moment is one of such moments some of you, people are coming under the power of God and you're opening your eyes to look. You don't have business with them. This is how one of the systems that God uses to change and shape the lives of generations. Now listen. Oh God. Now, when Francis was ministering, he made a statement. If you are faced with a calamity and you are asked to respond to it, what will your hand produce? Oh God. This is what I saw in the spirit. Please, while you are listening to me, ensure your eyes are closed and your focus is on, not on me, but on Jesus. In the spirit, I saw the hands of people lifted. And one by one, I began to see the hands disappear. And the things that were coming out as alignments to their shoulders were lens or fire. Still having the shape of human hands, but no longer your flesh. I saw God translating the hands of people to fire. Now please lift up your two hands everywhere you are. Oh God. Oh God. There is an angel in our midst. His feet burns with fire. He's about to baptize a number of persons. From now, your hand will begin to bring deliverance to the oppressed. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. 
oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, from the back to the front, left to the right, from inside to outside, let your fire kindle rest upon these hands, rest upon these hands, rest upon these hands, please don't be distracted, rest upon these hands, rest, rest, I see the fire of God upon the hands of people, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, rest, 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 oh fire of God, Rest, rest, rest. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. I see a healing evangelist in this role, in this middle role. Please lift up your two hands if you are in this middle role. I see the weakness, the witness of what's this man's name? Smith Wiggles Word. And I see the mantle of John Knox. Now, the mantle for prayer will rest on that one and God is going to use you to heal all manner of diseases. I'm going to count one to three. The hand of God will come on that person. I saw that picture in the spirit specifically in this middle row. Lift up your two hands. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Marusi brandi kabai kezeretina mara tenesko preni. Father, wherever this person eats, let this mantle or her mantle descend now. 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 Yes. Yes. Now. 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 Let that man to descend. Your life cannot be ordinary after now. Let it descend. Let it descend. Healing mantles. Healing mantles. Healing mantles. Healing mantles. Please help me hold the hand of that lady. Blamasus. Hold the hand for me. Yes. Hold the hands. Hold the hands. Maria Tane Supra Nakabana Silla Ruda Branavani Asena. Now everybody lift up your two hands to heaven. Our generation can no longer be the same after tonight. Now lift up your two hands everywhere you are and close your eyes. Oh God. You will repeat after me. Jesus. Baptizer of men. Baptize me with fire. For the second time. We are doing this seven times. Jesus. Baptizer of men. Baptize me with fire. Oh my God. Jesus. Baptizer of men. Baptize me with fire. Oh God. Oh God. And for the first time in your life, you will see visions. Please, don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Oh my God. Welcome to the banquet. See, it is a redefining moment. It's a redefining moment. I see mantles hang in this place. And I see God giving our generation another chance. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Now, listen. I wish I can stop seeing the things I'm seeing. We have not begun the meeting. We are just introducing us to the possibilities that are in this atmosphere. Now, God was saying to me some days back, He said, I shall announce that it's the season for Deborah and Lioness to arise. Deborah and Lioness, your time is now. Oh God. Young lady, your time is now. Amen. Please help him, help him. Help him, help him. Take, oh God. Now please lift your hands. Don't be distracted. Just close your eyes. Oh God. Oh Jesus. I wish I can stop seeing what I'm seeing. Say it again. Jesus. Baptize her of men. Baptize me with fire. Now I see God giving people crowns in the spirit. And that crown burns with fire. Lift your hands. That's the instruction. I beg you. I beg you. We are saying this two more times. The angels of God are everywhere in this meeting. 
They are going to put crowns that are bonds in your hands. As we say it for the last time, you will put those two hands on your head as if you are placing on your head a crown. And a fire is going to begin to burn. Oh God. It's, I, I wish that we can understand what I'm saying. But don't worry, the experience is better. Sleeping Deborah, your crown of fire is coming now and your life will never be the same again. Sleeping Deborah, sleeping Ketrin Kulmans. Oh God. There is a young lady here, you go to bed, please. Oh God, oh God. You go to bed and you see this tall woman in your dreams dressed all white. It's not a monetary spirit. There is a mantle of ancient women, men, women that have traveled in the secret place, calling, calling this generation. And tonight we have the witness of fire. We have the witness of fire. Lift your hands and close your two eyes. Jesus, baptizer of man, baptize me with fire. My God, 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 my God. Now one more time, Jesus, baptizer of man, baptize me with fire. Now listen, I'm going to count one to three. When I count the third time, you will put those two hands on your head. Some of you will not be able to stand it. There is a crown that God is placing on us. It's a crown of fire. You will, your voice will be restored. Your ordination will be restored. One, two, three. Put those two hands on your head. Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Restore the crowns. Restore the garments. Let the days of glory break forth again in their lives. Let it break, let it break. Recruit intercessors. Recruit warriors of the night. Recruit, recruit. Oh, hand of God. Recruit, recruit. Recruit, recruit, recruit. Thank you, Father. spirits where you are standing everybody in this room choir lift your two hands lift your two hands the Lord said I should announce I don't know who you are he's about to let rivers gush out of you now he will give you fresh songs from heaven that in protection is here fresh songs from heaven I'll count one to three father please pray in the spirit you are not yet to watch father whoever is the person you want to give this activation one let your hand come upon that person two Two, three, three, receive it, receive it. Fresh activations. See, you will miss your encounter if you are watching me. You will miss your encounter. Don't watch me. Oh God. Oh my God. Your name is to be humble. Hallelujah. Please have your seats briefly. Please help me with this sound. I don't want distractions when we begin to pray. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Please don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. If you have a writing material, pick them. We are about to travel. I have a few minutes to bring us God's word and we pray for the remaining time that we have. I did not intend to start this meeting this way, but we have to give ourselves to the instructions of God. God. I'm 
seeing hearing the name of someone in the spirit. Oh, can I stop seeing these things? They have been calling you in that place for long. They have been calling you. And so tonight, heaven is laying ambush. Kai. My world is in need of you. Sing with me. Raboni. Oh, I don't know. My world is in need of you. Yeah. Where's Vicky? Where's Victoria? My world. Raboni. Oh, I don't My world. Is in need of you, Yahweh. Let only you be free, only you be safe over my life, oh Yahweh. Over my life, oh Yahweh. Let only you be seen. Let only you be seen over my life, oh Yahweh. Over my life, oh Yahweh. Now, as you listen to me, I want you to be praying under your breath. Because what we are doing tonight is a procession. And if you are left behind at any point, you may miss out of certain things that should be of benefit to your journey. So I would like you to pray under your breath as you listen. The theme for the banquet this year is deep waters. It is not a subject to explain. It's something that should be experienced. When I started, I began by telling you that I have two good news. And one I told you was that today is my birthday. That's good news number one. Good news number two. We are going to have a meeting after the banquet. And it's going to be 12 hours. That 12 hours meeting is going to be a feast of fire. He said to me, tell them to awake from slumber. The time is short. Tonight, everyone in this meeting is implicated for glory. There is a level you get to in God. It's called the elastic limit. When you go beyond that point, you enter into what is called the breaking point. And once you have reached that point, your life can no longer return to normal. An attempt to remain normal will bring you into frustrations you never bargained for. It's called the point of no return. And that's the point that heaven will bring someone here tonight. And if you are that person, shout a loud amen. amen. Like Apostle Ima was saying, God is deep and God is vast. There is no searching of his understanding. And there is no man that has ever gotten to the bottom of God. Because he is an endless river. An endless river. The rivers in your village, if you enter it, you can see the end. You know where it ends. But the one I talked to you about is endless. The more you travel, the more you see that you have not traveled enough. Because every day he unveils a new dimension of himself I'm going to read our anchor scripture oh God oh Jesus help me Lord to teach tonight see please turn to your neighbor and say neighbor don't cheat yourself by sleeping see say it again my neighbor I love you don't cheat yourself by sleeping Hi.
can I tell you something? I'm responding to the question of one young man sitting here. You, the person was saying, Lord, will you use me like this ever in my life? And God said, I should tell you, some of us, eh, we are foreigners. Eh, our assignment is to prepare you and you will do greater than us. It, it may not look like it now. Don't worry. The river drives itself. When God opened my eyes in that vision and I saw it, I was scared for myself. He said, see, the people I'm preparing at the backside of the desert, you have not heard about them. You see these ones you are hearing of now, don't worry. They are preparing the way. My men are coming. And it's my prayer that after tonight, God will find us worthy of that call. Now, please come with me. We are going to read a lengthy verse of scripture. So I want you to travel with me. We don't have time. I would have asked that somebody read for us in the message version. But let me read King James so that we can run. Now, if you don't have a Bible, listen while I read. If you have a Bible, follow me so we read together. I'll take the first reading from Psalm 46 and verse 4. Psalm 46 verse 4. I'm waiting for those with their Bibles to be there. So we'll be on the same page. Please, if there are people outside, ensure they find a space for themselves inside. Now, Psalm 46 and verse 4. You are the fire. I am your sacrifice. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. Now, if you are there, say amen. The Bible says that there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacles of the most high now genesis chapter 10 chapter 2 verse 10 to 14 we are going to have a long read and i need you to follow this long read in the 12 hours that we are going to have we are going to have lengthy seasons of corporate bible studies if you are happy say amen yes we must do it so that you know our fire and not know your god and there are some of you basic questions of the Christian work you don't have answers to them because you don't study your Bible if we call for a concert now we will be many but let's call for Bible study but, but the problem is that you don't know that that is the core of your work with God so we must be people I will not be shocked if there are people in this place that from the beginning of this year till now apart from when they go to church they have not sat down to open their bible i will not be surprised why like why do you want to try god you go on facebook lord use me or kill me 12 o'clock you are snoring on your bed he'll kill you because the reason he will not use you so we will be people that will cultivate the culture of discipline of scriptures. Discipline of what? Discipline of what? Hi. Okay, let me ask this question. You have read your Bible from cover to cover before. Raise your right hand. You have read it before. Raise your right hand. Genesis to Revelation. Be, is, be proud of it. It's, it's good. Raise your hand above your head. I want to count to, so that I see what I'm saying. Raise your hand. One. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Where's the muscles? Those, those people outside, I'm sure they have not read their Bible. Hey. Say after me, Jesus. Say it, Jesus. I will read my Bible after this meeting. <laughs> Man of God, in this place, hundreds of us, only about 20 people. How about... Don't worry. You receive a hunger for the Bible after now. So let's read. Oh God. I see Jesus seated on the throne. I see Manuel. Moving everywhere, and I see the spirit 
doing it again. Hallelujah to the Lamb upon the throne. Now, Genesis chapter 2, verse 10 to 14. If you are there, say amen. amen. Now, let me see if there's anybody sleeping. If you are there, say amen. amen. Okay, so I'm going to read because of time. Just follow me. It says, And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it parted and became four heads. Rivers are having heads. The name of the first is Pison. It is that which compasses the whole land of Havila, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Pithelium and the onyx stone. Verse 13. The name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that encompasses the land of Ethiopia. Verse 14. The name of the third is Hedekel. That is the river that goes towards the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Ephrates. Now let's run to our anchor scripture because of time. Now, if you are Psalms 107, Psalms 107, we read from verse 23. So turn there. I'll wait for you to turn. For those of you that don't have electronic Bibles, Psalm 107, verse 23, we'll read to verse 30. Then we'll now read the whole book of Jonah, chapter 1 and 2. So this night, we will have knowledge. And when we stand to pray, you are going to see the difference between how you have been praying without knowledge and the difference between when you pray with knowledge. Now, oh Jesus, I love you. Now, if you are there, say amen. Now, this one, I want us to read it together. One, two, go. Eh? God forbid. If you are there, say amen. amen. Read, one, two, go. I'm hearing only Pastor Francis' voice. But when I say if you are there, say amen. Plenty of people said amen. Always. Are angels answering for us? If you are there, say amen. amen. Pastor Ruth, are you there? If you don't have a Bible, you are there. You don't even know where we call. Are you there? Ah. Okay. We are ready. One, two, go. Only Francis are red. Eh? Kai, don't worry. Maybe during 12 hours, ba, do you know what we'll do? We'll come with Kane. We'll come with Kane. In 12 hours, come with Kane. When you are coming in 12 hours, come with a Bible that is worthy. A Bible that is what? Don't worry. It's a long time. It's not soon. So, come with a Bible that is what? Oh God. Okay, let me read Jonah chapter 1. But open to that place. We'll read together. Chapter 1 and 2. After that, don't worry, we'll not read again. Amen. So Jonah is the last book we are reading. 1 and chapter 2. So I'm going to read because of time. So if you are there, say amen. Some of you are saying amen so I can start reading. If you are there, say amen. You don't know where Jonah is. Say amen. Kai. Favor. Where's your Bible? Damasus, where's your Bible? Media, don't let him use your laptop for Bible. Now, Jonah chapter 1. Now, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. 
for their wickedness is come up before me. Verse 3, but Jonah rose up and fled to Tarshish Kai, from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to where? Going to where? So he paid a fare and went into it and he went with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Verse 4, but the Lord sent out a great wind into where? Into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Verse 5. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man to his God and cast forth their goods in the ship into the sea to lighten it off. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast what? He was fast what? Kai. So the ship master came to him and said, Sir, what meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon your God. All of us who have been calling, no answer us. Call upon your God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. Verse 7. And they said everyone not to his fellow. Jonah refused to answer them because he knows what he did. They now said everyone to fellow and said, Come, let us cast lots that we will know whose fault this evil is upon us. So they casted lot, and the Lord fell upon who? The Lord fell upon who? Verse 8. Then they said unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon thee? What is your occupation, and where are you coming from? Where is your country, and which people are thou? Verse 9. And he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which had made the sea and the dry land. Verse 10. Then when the men exceedingly then when the men exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of who? Of the Lord, because he had told them. Oh God. Verse 11. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee that the sea may become to us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. Verse 12. And he said to them, Take me up, cast me forth into the sea. Kai. So shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake, this great tempest is come upon you. Verse 13. Nevertheless, the men roared hard to bring it to land. But they could not, for the sea rout and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech you, O God, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us his innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, has done as he pleased thee. 15. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered the sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. Verse 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to do what? To do what? And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and what? For three days and what? Now let's go to chapter 2 verse 1. Because of time, I'm going to read only verse 1 and verse 10 of chapter 2. Now, then Jonah prayed unto the Lord God, out of the fish, what? Belly. Verse 10. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and he vomited Jonah upon what? He vomited him upon what? Now, I want us to read chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 for the last time. Okay, no. Chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. If you are there with me, say amen. amen. Now, he said, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city. Preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. That one I sent you before. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was a great city. And it took Jonah three days, three days journey. To go through the whole of Nineveh. Now, finally, I want I want to reread our anchor scripture. Psalm 107, only in verse 23 and 24. They that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters. Somebody say business. Can't hear you. Say business. Now, this see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. I pray for someone here tonight. You will see the wonders of God in the deep. I say it again before the end of this meeting. You will see the wonders of God in the deep. Now, 
It's like some people wants to do. Please, everybody, stand up. It's those that are sleeping now and that will still be sitting. No. Man of God, please, you are to sit. You are not part of this command. Turn again to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, if you don't sleep before we close, you will not die, but live to declare the words of God. You can sit down. <laughs> you have confessed it. So if I catch you sleeping, I'll come and hold your hand. We'll preach together. Now, follow me. We are going to have an interesting time. <laughs> Let me pity these people. Go and sit down. It's well with you in Jesus' name. <laughs> God, there was a meeting when the vigil like this, I can remember it was in one of these Orthodox churches. And when, when I came, it was an annual youth conference. So when I came, they came and positioned two men. You know, I said, okay, that's good. This, good, this looks good. Until one of the guys slept and fell. I, I, mean, I said, senior pastor, please relieve this guy. <laughs> Out of my belly shall flow rivers. Oh my God. Rivers of living waters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of my belly shall flow. Out of my belly shall flow rivers. Rivers of living waters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Victor, may the hand of God be upon you in Jesus' name. Uh -huh. So I'm going to travel with you. So stay aligned. Now, this song I sang is going to be our anthem for the night. Now, we read in the Bible in Genesis how that God created Eden. And then he caused a river to flow from the altar to go around Eden. When this river proceeded, it became how many heads? How many heads? It became four heads. How many rivers proceeded? How many did it later become? And the four of them went to different departments. Time will not permit me to explain to you the meaning and the implication of each of these four heads. Because that's not our focus tonight. If I begin to do that, before we leave Pishon, we may have spent 30 minutes of our time. But I just need you to have a background knowledge that each of these heads have different location and functions. And I'm, I'm going to come there. God was trying to paint a picture. If you have studied scripture, you realize that everything that God did in the Old Testament was trying to explain a shadow of what is to come in our days. If you are with me, say amen. And so God came to Moses and he said, Moses, Look at the measurement of the temple. I am going to give you this measurement. Follow it accordingly and build for me a place of habitation. A place that the ark will be kept. A place that will host my glory. The destination of God was not that building. The God was trying to explain how he is going to dwell in man. So he was trying to paint a picture. The Old Testament was telling a story of what God is going to do in our days and in our time. And he was saying to Moses, and I'm not sure Moses understood it. Because the Bible was saying that the prophets that you hail as men of God, Elijah, Moses, he said, they desire to see our days. Because they cannot understand how that God in that day, that will be in a temple. And that temple, is not everybody that can go. To enter the Holy of Holies, only the high priest. And that high priest goes there how many times in a year? Once. That ark that bears the glory of God, you are not qualified to touch it if you are not in the order of the Levites. And even if you are a Levite and you don't meet the requirement for hosting the ark, if you bear it, it will kill you. On that day, when they were coming back from their marching orders, the ark did like this as he wanted to fall. Uza, innocent Uza. Listen. See, if you are ignorant, you can die before your time. Uza said, Hey! This ark wants to fall. But meanwhile, he has not met the protocols and the sanctification of Levites 
and he touched it the moment he touched it what happened to him what happened was Uza trying to do a bad thing by helping the ark but do you know when God struck Uza and Uza died did the ark later fall no did the ark later fall please talk to your neighbor and say my friend you cannot help God say it again my friend you cannot help God follow his protocols follow his leadings and for the last time no shortcuts out of my belly shall flow rivers rivers of living waters yeah, yeah, yeah. now just in case you are feeling sleepy you can stand up and stretch yourself because once i catch you i'll bring you here you become preacher number two i suspected it now god smote us are dead follow me yet the ark did not fall i'm going somewhere so god was designing something before the coming of jesus there was a pool that is called Bethsaida. and then the bible says that once in a while at a certain season the angel of god goes into it and he stirs what the river so each time the river is stirred the river only have capacity to heal how many per season how many per season one and the one is the first that will do what that will step into it it means that the supply of grace that came into the pool of Bethsaida was only able to heal how many people one all of these were happening in the Old Testament because at that time Jesus have not died Jesus came and he paid a visit to the to that place and then he met a man that was struck for how many years 38 years and he said my friend how are you ah uh, what's wrong with you now do you want to be made whole what's supposed to be the answer no what's supposed to be the answer yes or no there, no, there are people that will tell you no. There was a crusade we had. And, you know, oh God. Me, I went with somebody. So he was preaching. And then when he was preaching, he now saw a blind, you say a blind man. So I'm trying to be, I have to remember and be sure. Okay, not blind. Somebody that was on a wheelchair. The man was not blind. And it was time to pray for the sick. You know, there is a way you can pray for the sick without embarrassing the call of God on your life. Now, follow me. This is how you do it. This one, don't worry. When we do young ministers' conference, you hear it. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, heal them, heal them. Now, the Holy Spirit will go and heal. You now say, okay, if you know you are healed, come. Right? If you are not healed, don't worry. Your day is not today. But do you know what my, 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 my brother did? He said, the man on which uh, come bring him ushers bring him i said jesus it has happened elohim adonai ah, 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 yeah. elohim yeshua Elohim Adonai Aratani Kebrane Subrada Baranaka Ah, is that Pastor Domo? God bless you, sir. Good to see you. Is Prosper here? I'm not sure. Okay. He said, Bring the man on the wheelchair. Where I was, I said, Lord, this disciple saw that I came with this man. You know, when you are a soul of the prophet, there are certain things that your intercession should cover. I said, Lord, so if this man is not here, what will happen here? I was praying, Lord, please, just help us. Give me grace to leave this place in peace. You know, the, the, I, was, I was scared for him to worsen the issue. I said, bring him. So, you know, if your face shakes at that point, what you are supposed to do is that you would have used the man as an example. So, okay. You see how this man is lame and is serving God. 
What excuse do you have? No, that's an escape route, right? So the, the congregation will think that you have done an illustration. You have done the parables of Jesus. But he said, you will walk today. God. Ah, ah, ah. to help the ushers convey the man to the front and I took an escape route and stood at the back so that in case perhaps perhaps may the Lord give you understanding and he held the man the reason I'm telling this story is that it's not everybody that wants to be saved that man Jesus asked him, but Oga, how far do you want to be made who? He said, hey, my brother, let me tell you. I've been here for how many years? 38. And the problem is that I no get helper. Nobody is helping my destiny. Nobody is helping my ministry. That's why I've been here for 38 years. Is that a question? The question is, do you want to be made who now? He now say, ah, let me tell you. Just in case you don't know, sir, I have PhD in understanding the pool. I have studied it for 38 years. I am a professor emeritus of the pool of Bethesda. So there is nothing you can tell me about this pool, sir, that I cannot tell you. And he wanted to educate Jesus. He said, Jesus, do you know that this pool, there is one angel that used to come. Is the name I forgot, but that angel used to come at a particular time. But sir, the problem is that anytime he wants to come, because me, I don't have helper. Before I roll myself inside, the people whose helpers are there and their families are there will push one. And then some of us will have to wait for another season. So it has happened about 38 times. And this is my 38th year by the pool. Professor of the pool. And Jesus talked to him. Jesus never answered. He said, carry your mat and go. Whether I want to be healed or not. You are what? And so, the man of God prayed for the lame person. Now, to the glory of God, the man was healed of his lameness. Eh? But to the amazement of everybody, the man was like, so now that you have healed me, how will I beg and eat? And that, day, that was when I knew that it's not everybody that desires deliverance. Not everybody. Not everybody. And when you find people like that, leave them. Except you are compassionate. But you, I will leave you. A young lady met me and said, sir, I'm in trouble. I said, what's the trouble? He said, I'm staying with my aunties. And then my auntie's husband has slept with me almost every day. He's sleeping with me. He said, your auntie's husband. He said, is your auntie in there? I said, yeah. in the night, you sneak to my room. I said, okay. I'm going to help you. But condition number one, do you have a house? He said, yeah, my parents have a house in another state and all. I said, okay. The first demand for your deliverance is that you pack your bags and leave. Do you know what he told me? He says, I like the place. I said, you like the place? Say, yes. God bless you. Stand up and leave here. Next. There are people that do not want deliverance. They don't want deliverance. So. <laughs> can I talk to us this night? No, can I talk to us this night? Whether I like it or not, you will be delivered. Say amen. amen. See, I want to trust God to help me to help you and to help myself tonight. So that we will be delivered. You, you, have, you have an issue with women. Some of you is the fair ones. When you see a fair lady, your, your anointing is suspended. 
you are laughing. Let me tell you this. If you don't conquer yourself now, marriage will not deliver you from adultery. Lord, send me to the nations. Do you know how many fair people you will meet in Asia? And England? So that means for one country, you have one child. For one country, God opens you to. You have one child because you, you are... You are vulnerable to fear themselves. There's a reason I'm saying these things. So that after tonight, there are many things that will never be found in our lives forever. No, if you believe it, say amen. Good. You, you know you have problem with money. But when they want to appoint treasurer and fellowship, you are fighting for the post. You know, your own is money. Is that right? Nomination for treasure. I say, I am I'm available, Lord. Use me for your glory. Trust me with your purse. I will keep it for you, Lord. <laughs> if you do not want to be magneted, escape the first field. Escape the first field. And do you even know the evil now that is happening? Let me tell us. Hey. The man that lady was staying with was somebody that pastors the church. After they have done adultery in the night, in church, you still call him Papa, man of God. They still respect your anointing, no problem. I'm beginning to sound an alarm in our generation. So that God will deliver. See, let me tell you something. I said earlier, you cannot help God. You cannot do what? The Bible says that Jonah ran from the presence of God. And to him, he has escaped the presence of God. But one thing he failed to know is the fact that you cannot escape God. In the place he came, he aligned himself with a company that were not of like minds. Now, when Satan is bargaining for your destiny, the first thing he will do to you is isolation. Is what? Is what? You begin to push you away from people that can correct you, from people that can rebuke you. You bring you around people that can pet your back. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, we want to see you, oh Jesus, and we want to hear from you. We sing Emmanuel, Emmanuel, we want to see you. And we want to hear from you. One of the instructions God gave me for this meeting is that at the end of this meeting, he wants to raise Puritans. He wants to raise what? Puritans. Especially as he regards to immorality and masturbation. He said it to me very clearly. Men that will, and women that will say, Lord, this is 10th of August 2022. I am making a fresh commitment to stay away from anything that is immoral. And then heaven will begin a new page and you are going to see amazing restorations. Oh God. So I was saying to you that Jesus came to the man and he said, bro, do you want to be healed? And he said, sir, I'm a professor of the river. I've been here for, I have 38 years working experience. Now, this is the protocol. This is how this river works. I'm explaining this. I've not forgotten where I'm coming from. I'm coming from the fact that everything God was doing before the coming of Jesus, before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus was a story of the age to come. How that a time is going to come that there's still going to be a pool of Bethsaida, but it's no longer going to be a location. It's going to be in your belly. And so Jesus was speaking in John. He said, 
as many as believe in me, out of their belly shall what? Shall what? Rivers of what? Living waters. Out of my belly shall flow rivers. Rivers of living waters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jesus came and he now said, Bro, enough of the explanation. Carry your mat and go. And the Bible says, From that moment, the man was made whole. He became well. Did he enter the pool of Bethesda? Did he enter it? Do you know why? Because he met with both the pool and the sterile. Jesus was the pool. He was also the one that does what? That stirs the pool. He's the pool and the sterile. The God of all possibilities. He's the pool and the sterile. The God of all possibilities. He's both the pool and the sterile. Is a God of all possibilities. He said, You don't need the pool and you don't need the angel that stares. I am what? The pool. And I am the one that what? That stares. Therefore, now carry your mat and go home. Aye. He was discharged without hospital bills. After tonight, God will raise some of you that will discharge people from hospital beds. You don't believe it. I said, God will raise some of you that will discharge people from hospital beds. Don't forget that in that place there was no strings. You can say, give me strings. No, not that one. Key F. Give me strings. No, there were no strings. Because it's the pool and the sterile. The God of all possibilities. You become a mobile pool that is stead and charged 247. Hi. If they wake you from sleep, hey, there is an emergency. You will not say, let's worship first. Father, we declare that we love you. Now call the present. No, no, no. You are the carrier of the presence. He's a God of all possibilities. So, if you carry the one who is the God of all possibilities, you don't need a special service for special things to happen. It was in KSU here. We came out of my lodge. My friend and my, um, my myself and my friend. We've been indoors for three days. And so that night was the day we wanted to break our fast. Ha! Huh. If you see this guy on the road, you will not greet him. The way he lived his life on campus. His hair rough, his palm, slippers, everything. I was even dressing better than him. The guy is not... If you see him on the road, you may not... He's, he looks very unserious. In the place of prayer, we stayed with God three days. Now, I want to explain this to you so that we can cry to heaven. Because after this encounter I'm about to explain, I still went back to beg God. So we came out of our hostel and there's this woman that sells Akara. So we came to buy pap and Akara because we were bachelors. Bachelors and then it happened so much that I was not a good cook. And after three days, if he is the only cook in the house. So if you are to compel him to cook, then something may happen. Because for three days they have been without food and water. So you say, okay, let's go buy water, buy Papa Nakara. When we have regained energy, I will do my job of setting the gas on fire. And then you will begin your process of chefry. That, that was the agreement. So we came out as weak men, beggarly. And we came to the Akara woman. I said, ma, we want to buy Papa and Akara. And then we we'll call it Kose. Oh, the God of Kose. Give us Akara and Pap, and then put some sugar and help us with some water. And they did that. It was time to pay. I turned to him, sir. It's time to pay. Because he was the one with money. He brought out his money. 
and the woman was busy. He said, give my daughter, she will give you change. He brought out, I can't recall, I think it was a thousand naira, yes. And then we, they were supposed to give us change of 300. It means the things we bought were 700. <laughs> and then he gave the woman's daughter the money so we can get change. The moment the girl collected the money from him, he started screaming, fire, fire, fire. I said, ah. I said Jesus, APO, Alpha, what's happening? He said, me too, I don't know. I don't know. And the girl began to turn on the ground like snake. I shifted back. I said, wait, oh. And do you even know what got me angry? When we came, I shook the girl. I said, ah, because she, they are in front of our Lord. So we are close. They used to hail us, Pastor. So I, I said, ah, my friend, long time. I said, ah, Pastor, are you around? I said, I'm around, though. We smiled. So my friend did not even shake hand. He did not gist. He brought out what? Money. And the girl took the money from him. And she contacted fire. I went back to God. I said, Lord, no be all of us do this three days. What happened? Even, God, even if I'm the worst sinner, you know go show me mercy for this life. We all did three days. I shook a lady with a serpentine spirit and laughed and smiled. Zero discernment, zero inflow of power. He was not even conscious. He only brought her money to pay. And the lady started manifesting. You are the sterile and the pool. You are the God of all possibilities. You are both the pool and the stirrings. You are the God of all possibilities. And that, that woman was of the other religion. When he saw that, he said, Pastor, my daughter has been suffering from this spirit for long, from birth. I've forgotten the name they call it in Igala. Eh? Eh, Ali, what? Some of you are experienced, I, I think. <laughs> he talked to me. I said, my brother, now you give her money, go pray for her. He, <laughs> I was not sure why me I shook and nothing happened. You give money. So you won't, if I can't pray, make me think on. No. Complete what the Lord has started. <laughs> Hallelujah. To the reigning king, Hosanna, to the giver of Israel. Pray in the spirit for one minute. Hallelujah. To the reigning king, yes, Hosanna, to the giver of Israel. Maratana Cabrono Sabarana Makali de Brenevero. For one minute. Those of you feeling sleepy, you can use this moment to escape the chains of sleep. You have 40 more seconds. Pray in the spirit and ensure you do it with your heart. Cambre na Sabrana Maruta Makasi Breno Variatana Sabra Dabana Kaila. We are on a journey, it's a procession tonight. And our destination is Zion. Please pray in the spirit. You have 20 more seconds. Merianda suka breno maraya tenisa brono maranda ske broda varata brana karia tana subreni veninas. Hosanna to the giver of Israel. And we sing Hosanna to the giver of Israel. Now, amen. Now, follow me. You can become an extension of the fire of God. And you know what? You don't need to be a pastor to carry fire. You don't even need a title. You don't need a tie to walk in God. That, my friend, today, he doesn't even have any ministry. He doesn't have any... His, his own is anything... ICT, just that's him. He doesn't have it. 
If I can tell you that that guy prays more than some pastors. But he doesn't have dream to have any ministry. If it is of people, the next day, they will call Ojoka for a beautiful design. God of fire and anti Aligenu International conglomerated ministries. Please say after me, I'm a wonder. I carry the life of God. I carry the fire of God. And tonight, I activate it. I walk in the reality. I live according to God's expectation. I live in purity. And my life commands power. So Jesus said to the man by the pool, Take up your beds and go. Because I am both the river, I am the steering, I am the one that is captain of the angels. And the man, with all his explanations and professorship of 38 years, packed his kaya and left by himself. Then Jesus now began to say, to what's in the matter? About the time he was about to leave the earth, Jesus came and said, guys, you see all these things that I did, raising Lazarus from the dead, casting out devils, um, converting souls, preaching the gospel. He now said, you will not do what I do, but you will do what? Greater what? Greater what? Ah! Okay? Wait, let's even do the ones we have done first, eh? Then you can graduate us. He said, no. The line and expectation is what? Is greater works. This understanding will kill any satisfaction to kill it. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, my altar is calling you, my altar. Is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you. So he said, You will do greater works. Greater works means that if Jesus lifted 50 kg. Why is on earth? How many are you supposed to lift after he left? Answer me. How many? If he lifted 100 kg, how many are you supposed to leave after he leaves? He said greater works. He did not say equal work. If you have raised the dead before, one, just one, raise your hand. No, raise your hand. If you have raised the dead before, raise your hand. Okay. You are praying for somebody that has a headache before and fever joint. Raise your hand. I like it. God bless you. The, the only complaint was headache, oh, headache only. And he said, man of God. I respect the oil of God on your life. There is aurora on your head. But I have headache. And then you lay your two hands on the person. Father, Iloka Baruna Kamesa Vena. Kai Zevoni. How do you feel now? Fever, sir. My altar is calling you. Oh God. My altar is calling you. My altar is calling you. My altar is calling you. Oh God. My altar is calling you. 
Listen. One thing God will do tonight is that He will matriculate us into the school of His power. Now, before I proceed with our scriptures, I need to explain to you that the power of God is in dimensions. The power of God is in what? It's in dimensions. You know, my generation thinks that once a man of God ministers and people don't fall, the person is not powerful. If you have that notion, say amen. Eh, I know. There are people like that. One of my boys finished the meeting and he called me. He said, sir, Kai. Kai, sir, no, no, no. I said, ah, what happened? He said, sir, after we spent money, we invited people. Sir, I preached. I was sweating. I preached for more than one hour. Sir, I prayed. Lay hand, nobody fed. And I now ask him a question. Did you make other call for the those that are not saved? He said, yes, sir, yes, I did that one. Now. That one is normal. I did it. I said, okay, how many people? He said, sir, about 20 people came. And I told him, that's the power of God. Let me tell you, in all the dimensions of power, maybe we'll treat that in 12 hours. In all the dimensions of the power of God, the highest level is the power to save. The highest level of the display of the power of God is the power to what? Now, the Bible was trying to describe the heart of man. Do you know what he said? He said, Kai. He looked for English. He now said, the heart of man is desperately what? He did not say wicked. He said desperately. That means man is wicked and he is anticipating more wickedness. Desperately. Have you seen a desperate person before? So that's how man is desperate for wickedness. Then to now see one soul. Do you know why heaven organized party each time one soul repents? Because to see one man whose heart is desperately wicked. Kneel down before Jesus. He said, Lord, I give you my heart. It's not English language. It is what? It is power. And that's the only display of power that heaven organizes party for. If I open 10 blind eyes today, there's no party. There's no party. Heaven will not rejoice. You will say, okay, you are doing it. When they came to Jesus, their testimony was that, sir, in your name we cast out devils, we do all of that. And I say, don't rejoice about that one. But rejoice that your name is where? See, that's the highest level of power. The power to save. And so there are some of you sitting here that God has given you utterance. Each time you speak, men are convicted of their sin. But because the other person, if he's praying powerfully, you feel you are not powerful. Please say to yourself, I'm powerful. The power of God is in me. And I walk in it every day. So our generation have created that cliche that ah, once people don't fall, there's no power. Who told you that? Some will fall. Tomorrow they are having three some. Do you know what it means? That a fornicator will be convicted by God and say, Lord, no more. That is power. You can't deliver yourself. It takes power to what? To be delivered. I used to have a friend that suffered from masturbation. Kai. This guy cannot go a day without masturbating. It's impossible. The cancer was eating him deep. To the point that they still made him leader in fellowship. So he will finish preaching. But in the night, he must masturbate. He will travel for fellowship conference, national conference. Because people are in the hostel. He will go to the bedroom. He must do it. It's a daily ritual. And so he came and said, Sam, he called three of us. We were his friends. He said, I have something urgent to discuss with you guys. And we came. We thought maybe something. He said, brothers, masturbation is eating me deep. For the past how many months, there is no single day I don't masturbate. The guy said, I will set deadline. I said, Lord, from today. Do you even know what he said that made us laugh? His birthday, 
was March what? I've forgotten. March, I've forgotten the exact date. A day to that day, and I say, Lord, let me masturbate by 11. So that as I'm entering into this birthday, I will not do it again. This deadline is what we are working with. Father, seal it in Jesus' name. Ah, people have mind. So he was watching his time. Level 50, according to him, he carried his phone. <laughs> Nothing. He said, ah, Lord, it's a new day. On this day of my birthday, never again, never again. He slept and woke up. Before 10 a.m., he did again. Of that same day. That's how some of you write New Year resolution. When you are doing crossover, in this year, I will write 10 books. Have you written one, one line? One line. I want you to repeat this. Say after me. It's beyond decision. It takes power. And I'm saying this again. No matter the level of chain or affliction. No matter what you have been struggling. Tonight you will meet with the power of God. Another display of the power of God. Is power to make wealth. Power to what? To make. These are different dimensions of the power of God. So you now come and say, all these rich men that are in church, they don't have money. They don't, they cannot eat the sick. It's power. You, you finish healing the sick, you trek home. No money for Kada. Different dimensions of the power of God. Sometimes it's possible to have all of them work in your life. Depending on the will of God and your hunger. Somebody say hunger. There's a power to save there's a power to heal the sick. Said right, he spake, the power of God was present to heal. There's a power to make wealth. Say it is the Lord, remember the Lord thy God, but for it is he that giveth the power to what? To make wealth. It's power. That's why it's not everybody that is wealthy. It takes power to make wealth. Power. But the highest of them is the power to what? To save. Because you can be rich and go to a fire. Listen. You can even be an unbeliever and Jesus will heal you of your sickness. And you will go to hell if you don't believe him. But he healed you. But if you are saved, even if you die blind, where are you going to? Heaven. That's why it is the highest form of the display of the power of God. So that is to change your mindset after tonight. Don't be looking at yourself that, okay, because this person is doing this one, you are not doing it, you are not powerful. No. As expensive as wisdom is, wisdom is a form of the power of God. Wisdom. The ability to take the right decision at the right time. Knowing what to do per time. That's wisdom. That's power. There's another level of power that commands influence. There's another layer of power that commands influence. I've seen men of God, sir. The only thing they know is to quote by they, in their service. They, you cannot record that one headache is healed. But the crowd, the pool, the miracle worker don't have it. So there is a power for influence. So, but that's not our topic tonight. So, Jesus said to the man, take your mat and go. You have been discharged. And the man left. And then in the book of John, he made a statement. He said, they that believe in who? What's the condition? What's the condition to believe in him? He said, they that believe in me, what will happen to them? Out of their belly shall what? Shall flow what? Of what? Second to the last point, before I talk to you about Jonah and we pray. He did not just say, out of your belly shall flow rivers. He was specific. He said, the rivers that will flow are rivers of what? Are rivers of what? What does it mean for a river to be alive? River flow, river flow. Let it turn our river flow. Fill your church 
once again let eternity be seen now listen out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters not dead waters how then can my river come alive how that's what I want to explain. And this is another crucial point in this meeting. Please don't miss it. Because all of the impactations and the release of graces that God is going to bring to us, your profiting is going to be determined by this understanding. Let's go back to the river at Bethsaida. As long as the river was not stirred and the temperature of fire is not applied, it does not have capacity to heal one soul of us so that means if the river stay unstead if the river stays without being stead for one year that means the river was dead for how long for one year but the day the angels come and troubles the water the ability to revive and to heal will be restored and just in case you are listening to me and you are thinking that Kai, me, I have lost it. You have not lost it. Your river is asleep. Your river is what? Now, before you leave here, it's going to come alive. Say amen. Ay. Ay. Something happened one day and I went back to the Lord. I said, Lord, what happened? I remember when I got born again, I was in my uncle's house. I was quite young. I will wake up on Saturday and I will go to hospitals. I was in secondary school. I will come to hospitals. I said, and the, the, what, what baffles me is the kind of audacity I have. And when I look at my pictures that I took that time, I was laughing at myself. Wait, how did this people even see you? That day, as I'm going out on Saturday, I will wear, there was a pencil jean I have. It was my best. Any day I wear it, just know that Satan is in trouble. It was, but, but the only problem in that jean is that it doesn't have zip. So I used to wear long jersey, Barcelona jersey to cover it. So it, it's covered, but it's, I'm the only one that knows there's no zip. But it was my best. And I'll wear my palm. And, I'll, and do you know the anointing? There was a day I tore in in that jean that I now have zip. And I forgot that there was no zip. So it's the shirt I used to turn in that was covering the man of God. The rod of authority. I went to the hospital. And I said, I said, young man, who are you looking for? I said, I want to see the doctor in charge of this hospital. Yeah. I said, any problem? I said, I said I, then I said, you don't have hospital cards. I'm not sick and I cannot be sick. I said, I want to see the doctor that is in charge of this private hospital. I gave my life to Jesus not up to three weeks old in students' conference in Okpo. When that the made daughter call, we oh Lord in student youth are place, I, I think. I came back next Saturday. Prayer for his I went to the hospital. I said, Doctor say, ah, ah young man, they say what's the problem? I said, sir, I want to discharge all your patients. <laughs> Listen. What is about to rest on you tonight, it will be the one to start driving your life. I didn't know, I didn't know shame. I didn't know what, what's my own. My own is that Jesus said I can heal the sick. Therefore, I am here to discharge. So you are ho holding this people hostage. So I have come as a deliverer <laughs> to bring them deliverance. And doctor say, okay, so if I get you correctly, sir, you want to pray for those that are sick. He said, yes. Yeah. He said, well, okay. I'm also a, a Christian, so I will allow you to pray for them. But please, when praying for them, ensure you don't disturb others. I said, don't worry. Don't, don't worry about that. And they called the nurse. Show him to the ward. As we were going, I saw in front of the door, emergency ward. He said, yeah. So he came into the emergency ward. There was a woman lying there with her tongue. About the whole manner of things. I was not scared. I said, what was that? How long have you been here? She could not talk. I said, double wala. And what may I know in my own mind, small mind, is that I want to pray for the sea. First lead them to Christ. 
Say, Lord, say after me. So this one cannot even talk. So how can he say after me? So when they now receive you, say, okay, Jesus. Now this person say, I receive you is your child. Oh, please, see them, please. But this one cannot talk. And where I stood, the compassions that Jesus used to have came on me. And tears were rolling down my eyes. And I held her leg. I said, Jesus, please heal her in Jesus' name. All my boldness died. All the one I came with. I want to see the doctor with this. Lord, please heal her. She was the only one in the emergency room. I prayed. Nothing happened. I lay. I went back home. I went to lie down. I started feeling like a sinner. I said, Lord, I pray for that one man. You say your name will cut out heal the sick, but she's not healed. Please help me now. Did I do something wrong? And I even went fasting, sir. Why? Why? But you know the funny thing? The following day, I woke up. Another strange boldness came. The righteous is as bold as what? I went back. I came. And I told the nurse, take me again to the doctor so that we can go to the wards. Say, at this boy. As we were entering, the doctor saw me say, tell that boy to go back. I said, what happened? He now said, do you know how much we have been making from that woman? When I prayed, nothing happened. But after I left, the angels that came with me stayed back. And in the course of the night, she, according to her, she saw herself in the night. They brought her into a theater room, removed all the punches, and they kept something like an iron on her tummy. It went flat. She came back from that dream and she became normal. The doctor explained to me. I said, oh good, I'll be coming here every day. Now, by reason of this testimony, take me to the world, anywhere. That day, she was the first encounter. When I prayed and there was no instant healing, I went back. I left the rest. I said, now, today, take me to the rest. My faith was encouraged. The woman, the nurse called her. The boy you say you are looking for came back again. Before I fully pray for the other people, the woman came with her husband, her children. Came with, um, what did she even bring? Rice, fish. It's good to be a man of God. Though. <laughs> and can moth. Hi. Can moth is a blessing. Spirit fill your church. Feel your church, feel your church again. Messiah, come to us, come to us, come to us again. And I went to the world. I said, What's your own problem? They will explain. I said, I now have a reference point. I said, if it was Jesus that healed that woman yesterday, in the name of Jesus, you are healed. And I moved to the second bed. Because now, I know that you will not hear them immediately in the night. You will them. <laughs> I was in secondary school, friends. And I did not know plenty of scripture. The only scripture I knew was Hebrews 9.27. And it's still the my jota. And that scripture, I knew it because when I got born again, I was looking for messages. The first message I heard was Dr. Paul. Many years ago, he preached on that Hebrews 9.27. That's the only scripture I knew. I can cram, apart from John 3.16, of heart. But I know you to quote this when I go to pray for the sick. Because how will you come and want to pray for a sick? He says, I pointed out to man wants to die. Is that scripture good? That means instead of healing, they were thinking of death. Yahweh, come to us, come to us, come to us again. Yahweh, come to us, come to us, come to us again. Oh, please come to me. Come to me, come to me again. Overflow my life, 
flow my life flow my life again oh yeah we come to me come to me come to me again i don't know who you are but tonight he will come to you again Say it again tonight. Jesus will come to you again. Please, everyone outside, come inside at this point. Damasus, make sure everybody is inside. We'll soon begin to pray. You are the bomb of Gilead, the God of glory. Look up on me with your grace. You are the God of all glory, the God of our flesh. Look up on me again. I see books open in the spirit. And Jesus said, I should announce to this house. That is about to remember somebody again. I announce it for the second time. Jesus is about to remember someone again. So I came to the hospital and I told him, Take me to the wards again. The nurses were excited. The woman. We were praying for others when the woman came with her family because the nurse went to call her. He said, that boy is here. The woman came and knelt down. I said, no, you can't kneel down before me. And I remember the scripture. When Paul did one miracle of Peter, they came and wanted to, they naked themselves. They said, we are be like you. I said, no, 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 no don't do that. But, but, but some people, once they do, they say, Papa, they lie down. They say, oh, God bless you. Celebrate grace. God, God, Really? Until my only case is you, spirits keep brooding over me till I look more like you. Until my desire is yours, spirits keep brooding over me till I look more like you. Until my only guess is you. Spirit keep brooding over me. Don't give up on me, Lord. Till I look more like you. Until my only hunger is you. Spirit keep brooding over me. Till I look more like you. Till I look like you in power, in character, in lifestyle. In authority. Now, let me try to round up so we can pray. I may not be able to dwell more on the issues of Jonah. But our anchor scripture told us that business are done where? In deep waters. What is business? Business is exchange, yes or no? Business is exchange, it's transactions. Kai. I want to explain to you the secret. You want to be a general. You want God to use you in these last days. There is one secret. And that's what I want to explain to you from this scripture. If you know this and you practice it, no force from hell can stop you from doing the wonders of God. And I'm going to explain. So I went to the world and prayed to the glory of God. Some people got instant healings. So we're not healed instantly. So I went back home. The next day was a Friday. And I said, Lord, today, let the sick wait. And as God was healing some of them, they were leading them to Christ. Let them wait. Let me go for the souls. And I went to a secondary school. He said, the secondary school is one of the most notorious, cultist, 
in the whole local government, that secondary school, that government school, is the most notorious. It's a school that they'll be having FCS. The stubborn boys will be outside stoning people inside. And on that day, I remember what I wore. My God. I went, I came to the president. I said, see, I am Samuel Adams. I just gave my life to Jesus and I am on fire for God. I want to come and preach in your fellowship. What is the time? The guy was confused. Ah. I don't know you, you don't know me. You just came from nowhere. You see, you are some other, you are on fire for God. Can I tell you something? If you are on fire, you will know. You can't pretend that it's an identity. You know. If you are, if you are on fire, you will know. Yes or no? If you think I'm lying, Victor, come and hold two naked wire. I hear. <laughs> you cannot be on fire and not be conscious. A carrier knows it's a carrier. If it's not there, you also know it's not there. Every other person may be deceived. Eh? But if you, you are not on fire, you know that you are not on fire. Because the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. So I came there with boldness and passion for, for souls. I said, I learned that this secondary school is notorious. Tell your schoolmaster, I'm coming next week Friday to come and preach in your fellowship. And I give you an assignment. Walk around all the classes. Tell them that a young man is coming. His name is Samuel Adams and he is on fire. That's all you should say. And I left. I did not even wait for approval. Whether you whether will say, come, don't come. I just left. I went and I was praying, Lord, encounter people. And that time, I used to see how our Father and the Lord will do a tackle, lead people to Christ. As he lead them to Christ, I said, oh God, this thing, let it work that, like that. I went to the mountain, I prayed. To now water down my faith, it was a mission house. And there were two brothers that were lame in the mission house. So when I finished praying from the mountain, I came down, I met them in the hall. Younger brother and elder brother, all lame, afflicted by the power of darkness. And they have been in that hall. In that mission house, we have Bible school students that pray for the sick. So these men of God have been praying for these people. So on that day, I came down from the mountain. Say good. And I read in the Bible, that place, he said, and Jesus, saying unto the man, arise. Say good. I came to the two brothers. Say, the two of you believe Jesus. Have you confessed him as Lord and Savior? He said, no. say, oh, that's why you are not healed. Now, let me teach you something. You are going to confess Jesus and you will walk today. He said, hey. So they confessed Jesus. I prayed for them. I said, now, two of you, stand up and follow me. They followed me. They followed me. I left their hands. They walked from the first end of the hall to the door. I told them to walk back. They walked back. And while they were walking back, it came to my mind to run outside and announce that I have prayed for them and they are well. The moment that thought came to my heart, the two of them fell where they were. And the Holy Spirit came to me. He said, on this journey, the day you desire to be seen, that day your death begins. Let only you be seen. Let only you be seen over my life.